Hello and welcome to episode 120 of Kaiju Curry House, the fortnightly show that gives you a healthy dose of Kaiju goodness every other Monday. I'm Paul Williams and today we're going to be discussing Godzilla 1998. It's literally 25 years to the month that this film was released. Uh, Fortunately, we haven't been able to schedule all the hosts at one time. So what we're going to do is segment by segment, just put our thoughts all together and um, just slice it together and release it as an episode. Now, I know this film divides fans, but it's obviously boring if we all think the same thing. So I'll say that back in 1998, when I was a, a younger lad, um, I was extremely hyped for this film. I remember going to see something in the cinema and the trailer came up where the kids were in the museum, things start to shake. And I remember joking to friends, oh, it's Jurassic Park 3, I think we were saying at the time. And the foot comes down and Godzilla comes up. So at the time, I'm, yes, can't believe it, we're getting a big budget Godzilla. And my friends who I'd shown some of my VHS Godzilla films to, were very much, no, I can't believe they're doing this. Um, Because from what they had seen, it's a man in a rubber suit, the the effects were very poor compared to the Hollywood films. And so they just were not interested at all, whereas I'm completely, you know, just psyched that that something is going to happen of a franchise I love. Um, And I'll get to see a Godzilla film in the cinema and not watch it on a TV. I can't remember how long it took from that trailer for the film to come out, but if there was ever a trailer on the TV or in the cinema, I was all about it. Couldn't wait. Could not wait. Obviously, there wasn't really the internet around much at that time. It was very, you know, it was very new. I wasn't in the message boards. I didn't know any theories. I didn't know anything about the film. And magazines were, you know, were released monthly, so I wouldn't have read any reviews about it because I was going to see it day one, or at least the weekend um, that it came out. And sure, I was disappointed. We're not not going to pretend otherwise. The Godzilla that I know and love was not in this film. This Godzilla had lost a lot of weight, didn't seem to have the, the strength, the atomic breath, an enemy to fight. There just wasn't... It wasn't... It, um, I think it's Toho put somewhere in a quote, you know, they, America or TriStar, however they said it, um, took the god out of Godzilla, which is why now Toho refer to this creature as just Zilla. But at the same time, while I may not have thought it was the best thing ever, I enjoyed it. It was still a lot of fun. It was still a big budget monster movie that I got to see on a big screen. There wasn't really anything like that around, you know, apart from Jurassic Park, that, which was obviously just dinosaurs. There, there wasn't a giant monster movie at the cinema that I can think of. You know, it's kind of like Godzilla 98. And then what? Pacific Rim? I don't I can't remember. But this was obviously, this was my first experience of a big screen monster movie. And while it may not have been the Godzilla I'm used to, it still had some great action. The music was good. I remember buying all the singles, <laughs> the, the Puff Daddy, uh, Jamera Choir. Um, I mean, the soundtrack had like, loads. It had, what was it, Wallflowers and Green Day. Loads loads of good songs on the soundtrack. The music, otherwise, was good. Uh, the directors, director, the, you know, it was the team that did Stargate and Independence Day. So... We knew they're very capable of doing these summer sci-fi blockbusters. There's no reason to think it would be bad. But for whatever reason, they guess they just dropped the ball a bit on this one. And it's not that it's not that it was bad, it's just that there was a lot of missed opportunity. They were trying, from what I could tell, they were trying to build up a lot of either tension or anticipation for the reveal of Godzilla. And so we just saw a foot. We saw a foot for about, I'd say, 50 minutes of the film. And we're not used to that sort of tease. We know what Godzilla looks like. But all all we could see on... I mean, 
if you watch on YouTube, the, the poster, which you can see behind me, is his foot. There were, I think there were posters on buses, like his foot is this big, and it was just his foot. You know, that that's all they were revealing of. And they wanted to keep this creature design a secret for, I guess, for, for a reason of trying to get audiences into seats, say, oh, what's an American Godzilla look like? But I swear he was then on magazine covers once the film was released. So there wasn't really that much point in hiding it. But I digress. Seeing just a foot was disappointing. I'd rather we saw perhaps different bits of him. I think, I think you do see like his tail at one point when he's crossing over. And there are some some teases. But yeah, seeing a foot for quite a while was a bit boring. Let's focus on the negative first. Yeah, so the foot was a bit boring. The atomic breath, which I mentioned, it. I mean, what what was it in this film? I remember him br- breathing, and there was fire. It was. It was like he. It was almost like he was just blowing hot air or something, and then the cars got blown by the by his breath and exploded. There was nothing else. I almost feel that. Perhaps they finished the film, did some test screenings, and people said, "Hey, Godzilla! You know that that famous that famous monster that you're doing a your own version of. Doesn't he have like an atomic breath or something? He breathes he breathes fire or radiation or something, doesn't he?" And they thought, "Ah, actually, yes, he does." To keep the fans happy, we'll put a scene in where he kind of does something, and that's it, because it it really is an afterthought, and it's such. An iconic part of Godzilla that I don't know how how else to explain why they just wouldn't have it. They, they should either just not do it at all or do it properly. And we saw how Legendary did it. You know, the, we have his his spines light up all the way. It builds up. The, there's that whirring sound. It's Legendary just absolutely nailed it. And Shin Godzilla was unbelievably good. Doing the atomic breath scene, it was incredible. This was was just pitiful. The goofy scenes with the mayor of the city, I assume that was for done for comic relief for the like for the kids. It was just a bit serious. Like, oh, I don't want any candy. I was saying, what is it trying to be funny? I they can skip that. I don't mind, you know, the worm guy and, and all that. Yeah, that's fine. Make fun of him because he, he he does that. And they can't pronounce um, Totopolis, can they? Who I believe was the design, the designer of Godzilla for this film. And I suppose the the baby Godzillas, I, I don't mind them when they're slipping over on all the um, little balls. I guess they were like chewing gum balls for the machines. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It it is goofy, but I I think it's 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 just on the line of is it being too silly or not. Like when they're going up in the elevator and you see them eating their popcorn and they all just like, turn to look at them. I like that. That's funny. Yeah, that that can stay. But when they're being chased by them and they just trip over, I was like, mm, actually, that's a little bit too cheese for me. But hey, other than that, I can forgive. I'm not supposed to forgive. I'm fine with the rest of the film. The start in an iguana, radiation, okay, different, but. Sure, we'll just have a radioactive iguana. The start when he's we just see the um the sub being attacked. Yep, that's great, that's a bit of intrigue. Leave it that way. As I say, the worm guy, he's doing experiments, um Chernobyl, I think. He's you know, seeing how the radiation is affecting worlds. Great, we like Godzilla's all about radiation, that's good. Let's put that in there. The arrival when the guy's fishing and like, Godzilla's head just comes up and through the water starts. Uh, smashing up the dock and then he's going through the city the city and the boats are falling off of him and things and you you can't really see him again you see him a foot a leg a tail here and there that's fine that's all good the helicopter chase i know it's a little bit silly that they can't keep track of you know godzilla being how big he is but that's fine it's fine the military will fire in their rockets and they always miss in the toho films you know but this time we get a bit more up close, we're getting a chase scene. You don't really chase Godzilla normally. He comes to you. They're actually chasing him this time. Not that, I don't know why he's bothered, but um, he, he seems very afraid of these helicopters. Um, and then he manages to outsmart them by going, <laughs> making a hole in the building, going behind it, and then crashing through a building to attack a helicopter, which looks... How he knew he was there, I don't know. It's stupid. But it was it was fun. And I'm fine. I'm fine with the fun. And so I... 
I enjoyed I enjoyed the movie overall. Um, I was very disappointed in the ending that he gets tangled up. I was, again, he gets tangled up in the bridge. Okay, I'll let that pass. But the fact he gets shot by what is it? Six missiles and then die. It's like, come on. I know he got hit on by the submarine as well by what two torpedoes. But when you think Godzilla, you don't think that an airplane's gonna kill him. It's just too strong for that. And then also they do the the end of the heartbeat, and that's very sad. Um they're trying to do like King Kong. So yeah, so overall, I'm not gonna score anything, but Godzilla ninety eight isn't awful by any means. It's just not as good as a lot of the Toho films. But maybe that's because I grew up with the Toho. And so there's that bit of nostalgia where I was like late teens when it came to Godzilla 98. So my taste in films have been changing. I'd actually, I'd, I was kind of starting to grow out of Godzilla a bit. And then this came about thinking, oh, this is going to be more grown up. It's you know, the series has grown up with me. And it was like, actually, no, it's, they're just throwing a big budget to it. But let's talk about the gods of the design. Because I really like the design. I think it's great that they didn't try and do the same as Toho. They went with something completely different. I think it was quite a bold move because they could have just done a Godzilla. They could have done like Legendary, do, which I do love, by the way. But I'm just glad they tried something different. And I even bought myself a Defo Real X Plus of Zilla because it's one of the only you know very few models that you can get of that design and the the, the dorsal thing you know the, the plates I love how they look and then the whole fact that it's more of a it is it's a mutated iguana that is what it is it's a creature they're trying or I think they were trying to go with a much more animal feel because this isn't a man in a suit they're going CGI and they're going to say right let what would a mutated lizard actually look like do you know the design the say it's quite a bold one and i i approve i'm i'm glad we got it it's just a shame that he doesn't have his atomic breath but you know well he does but it's just not effective i mean let's face it the hanna barbera godzilla had laser eyes so you know toho godzilla doesn't have that i, I don't mind that at all it would just be nice if this one had something um i remember in the uh, Godzilla Generations Dreamcast game, you can unlock Zilla as a playable character after you've completed the game, and and his attack, like his special attack, is just wind. He's just breathing wind because that is what he does. And I wish they, if, if anything, perhaps they should do that more in the film. He could have used that to blow down some buildings, you know, to, to knock all the tanks back, not just use it chasing a taxi cab around. So that's a missed opportunity. Okay, so I've said that you know Godzilla wasn't well received. I think that's quite common knowledge. When the fact that it's referred to as Zilla or um, Gino, wasn't it? Godzilla in name only. You know that's it, it shows that it, it wasn't a huge fan favorite. It grossed three hundred and seventy nine million. Not too bad. It cost around one hundred thirty five to one hundred fifty million. But it had marketing costs of 80 million. 80 million just on marketing is insane. They were really marketing this to be a big thing. It was meant to be a trilogy. And then apparently after the um, disappointment, I say disappointment, it still made its money back. If, if, they, if, they could, if they could have kept their marketing down a bit, it doubled its money. And you'd think just on that alone, they could have, carried on made another film and instead we got the animated series which is brilliant the animated series is everything that i think we wanted the film to be because he's got his atomic breath and there's a whole host of enemies and there's an alien invasion story it's well it's like a toho film but animated i don't think i have much more to say on it apart from if nothing else definitely go check out godzilla the animated series so as well as hearing from the hosts i did want to read a couple of comments from the kaiju curry house group on facebook with what you know your opinions were of the film so we've got here dave lant 
I think it's an enjoyable romp that in no way deserve the, deserves the hate it gets. Yes, it's a radical change from what the fans accept as Godzilla, but it was made following and clearly learning from Jurassic Park and attempted to make G a leaner, more realistic monster. Jean Reno was as fantastic as he usually is. Roderick was fine, but uh, they did play on the name and worms a bit too much. Not the best, but far from the worst Godzilla movie. Thank you, Dave. I think I'm completely in agreement with you. Um, I don't mind the worms bit as much as, but other than that, yeah. We also hear from Brandon Hickley Smith. And Brandon, if you don't already, I think you need to write film reviews somewhere, uh, like a on your own web page or something, because clearly you've got a lot of passion for Kaiju. Um, or maybe like a YouTube channel, you should do video reviews or something. But um, I really do appreciate you writing in. It's quite a long one, but. I think it deserves to be read out because you've put a lot of work into this. Just a heads up, this is probably going to be difficult for me to review because truth be told, this movie's result was not only one of the most notorious misfires in franchise history, but it's also the reason it almost cost my friendship with someone I knew from school, amongst other things too. However, I won't go into full detail of that. Maybe if I write up a biography about how I became a Kaiju fan, for you guys, should you ever decide to upload a video about how we grew up in the franchise. Anyways, I'll share my thoughts about one of my least favourite monster movies now and apologise if I might sound like a cuckoo head in certain areas. And the thing about that, I, I want to say back on episode one, maybe it was a long, long time ago. We did say how we all became Kaiju fans and I'd love to hear about how our listeners became Kaiju fans. So I think we absolutely should try either do it as like a video thing. We could, you know, you can put a video for YouTube or we can pop it into the podcast. But um, Brandon, I think we will absolutely try and do something where we hear from the Kaiju community, especially obviously the UK Kaiju community, about how they got into the fandom because it was such a niche um, at least it was back when I remember. But anyway, on with your review. Back in the late 90s, I was six years old. Thanks, Brandon. I'm feeling old. And just got introduced to Big G thanks to my dad's model of the Kaiju King and grew up watching the show films on VHS, which I still have to this day. The moment I came across a teaser trailer that America was going to develop that incarnation of Godzilla, I was hyped like any kid that age would be. It was also going to be directed by Roland Emmerich, who previously worked on one of my favourite alien invasion movies, which I'm going to say is Independence Day. So for that time, it was quite exciting for me. I figured this would help me gain more friends, since back then I was the only kid in the area who seemed to have knowledge about the classic Toho films. Unfortunately for myself in this case, it was not to be. I guess one thing I'm glad about all this is that I never watched 1998 in the cinema. Can't remember whether it was due to not performing well at the box office or if I was involved with other things at the time. When the movie was released, released on video, I rented it at my local video store and this is where things took a big turn for me and not in the least bit good. Once the creature makes its first appearance after emerging from under the boats at one of New York's docks to make landfall, there were some odd differences. The overall body shape was completely different quite skinny as if based on a xenomorph anatomy. The dorsal plates were barely maple leaf-like and the head just looked bland and ugly as if there was no character to it. First thing that came to mind was some kind of overgrown velociraptor on drugs that wasn't even as big like the original Godzilla. The eyes, however, were sort of similar to Heisei Godzilla, which is something, you know, not great, but good kind of silver linings. Although overall, I disliked the entire concept of having this incarnation portrayed as a mutant iguana. The opening credits was pretty much a dead giveaway. Somehow, the thing that confuses me, confounds me, complicates me the most about his design is how it handles the iconic weapon. 
Apparently, the atomic breath was replaced with gale force blow to make vehicles explode like flame, like a flamethrower, to resemble the atomic breath that the original Godzilla usually has. Why not just give it atomic breath? Why would the people who made this movie go through the effort of making it look like it's coming out of the mouth instead of it, instead of just giving it the atomic breath? It makes no sense. And well, I'm sorry that you're disappointed. Um, but I'd completely agree with you on that atomic breath. It was stupid. Um, moving on, none of Godzilla's trademark characteristics are incorporated. I think one of the actors who played, who actually played Godzilla, went so far as to walk out of an early screening, angrily telling everyone present it's not Godzilla, it doesn't have his spirit. Along with its unappealing design, many Japanese critics clearly pointed out that it didn't make sense that a creature birthed by a nuclear explosion seemed afraid of missiles shot from helicopters. Therefore, no matter how much people say otherwise, to this day, due to pretty much what I have said about the whole concept, design, character, and even down to how it dies, I have always, and probably for the rest of my life, preferred to TriStar's version as just plain Zilla, since, as Toho explained, 1998 removed the god from the character. Also, it saves confusion with the better legendary version. Now, that's absolutely fine, because I mean, Toho, as you said, Toho have branded it as Zilla. this creature is Zilla on all Toho thingies. If you watch Final Wars, if you've got the DVD on the case, it's got a little circle with a picture of the character and it calls it Zilla. That's fine. It's Zilla. We we'll, we accept that. As for the entire plot, it wasn't even like a Godzilla story as it lacked the symbolism of nuclear threat. Basically, it was sort of like a bad remake of Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, where a worm biologist joins forces with a plucky news reporter, worst actress in the film, and a French Secret Service agent, best actor in the film, to put a stop to Zilla's nesting season. In the end, after the military kept missing the numerous the target numerous times, and the whole hatching event, which was kind of like a Gremlins ripoff, the crisis was put a stop put a stop by Zilla getting laughably entangled in the Brooklyn Bridges cables after a game of cat and mouse with a taxi cab just so a couple of jets can get a perfect aim to simply kill Zilla with a single missile barrage. The CGI quality was also not that good, especially when compared to previous films like Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park, it looked quite outdated. If anything, I quite like the soundtrack by David Arnold and Sean Reno's performance. Plus the cartoon spin-off is ironically improved, but everything else is pretty disappointing. Not terribly awful, but I was pretty bummed out by the whole outcome of this incarnation. Two out of five, just meh. I'm now going to pass over to Connor so he can share his thoughts on the film. Hey, Kaiju fans, it's Connor here. Uh, this is my segment for the Gods on 1998 review. Um, I'm not going to go over the plot about Gods on 98. Um, everyone is practically knows the plot about Godzilla 98. It's not a true Godzilla film. You know, it was just practically made to make money rather than with heart, I suppose. Um, well, then again, you could say every Godzilla film is made for money, but I mean, there's like, the, there was no love put into this project with the exception of maybe Patrick Antopoulos who put, I would say, his design for Godzilla in this film is pretty all right. Um, but um, other than that, you know, it's just like... Um, it just seems to be a trend with Hollywood whenever they try to adapt Godzilla films that they just always end up getting a, a director that just has no passion for the franchise and it's just a big, dumb monster movie. But at face value, Godzilla 1998 is not a terrible monster movie. It's just not a good Godzilla film. Um, like um, it, do, it can stand on its own, but uh, yeah, it does unfortunately share the... Uh, the title of Godzilla, and uh, it's just, it's like, why have you made a Godzilla film and you removed all of the the moral um, the moral questions? I suppose, like, um, because this is called Godzilla, we're, we're going to compare it to 1954. Um, like the what's the message? 1954. It's basically if we keep using more nukes, another Godzilla will appear or something. Like that. Basically, it's an anti anti nuclear message that. Uh, if you keep using nukes, things get worse. In this one, you know, they essentially they just 
brush it under the bridge pretty much you know uh uh like uh oh, we, we 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 made a mistake we we whoopsie you know like there's no like moral questioning or whatever and you know ah uh, god it's i will say though um uh it did um come out when i was a kid right i didn't go see it right this is me kind of a bit off top i guess but um this is the joys of not having like three other people to like banter off of but um yeah it came out as a kid um i was probably three years old at the time so i would never have watched it you know my first proper godzilla film would have been god terra mecha godzilla uh probably godzilla versus king Ghidorah. after that i don't know it's, it's blurry but um I did have uh, the puppet behind me, though, and uh, I'll give the movie some credit, is that the merchandise of that movie was uh, pretty good. Like, um, I did have, like, a Godzilla figure um, from that movie, even though I never saw it, you know, where it's like uh, you put, like, an atomic breath in its mouth, you press the spine in it. Uh, oops, I swore there. Um, <laughs> Paul can censor that. Um, where basically... Um, uh, the it breathes fire pretty much or a time breath, or whatever. Not that he does it in the movie, but um, you know, hey, the concept art shows him using the time breath, so that's fine. Um, I also had this hand puppet uh, behind me, and this hand puppet was ace. Let me tell you that now. Um, you know, it's like because you know it was it was quite big, and there was actually a button inside. So when you actually uh, open it up, he goes. <laughs> You know, like uh, the typical Godzilla sound. You know, it was Ace. It was an Ace puppet. You know, it's probably still in my parents' loft, actually. So, um, if I ever visit, uh, probably sometime. Who knows? Maybe I'll uh, I'll, I'll bring them on. <laughs> oh God. Um, but um, another funny thing about Godzilla ninety eight for me personally is that um, uh, when I was getting introduced to the wider Godzilla series um, uh, via. Uh, What's it called? Oh, here we go. Godzilla Destroyer Monsters. That really was my gateway drug to all the Godzilla creatures. For some reason, Connor's idiot brain used to think that that design there um, was the, the uh, Godzilla 2000. I don't know why. You know, it's just like uh, um, I was a strange kid and nothing's changed, unfortunately. But um, yeah, um, the only other thing I could say about Godzilla 98 is. Um, I, I don't have much to say about the plot, you know, because it's just generic monster movie stuff, you know, with no, like, morals except from, you know, the cast of The Simpsons. That's, I suppose, something that's a novelty, I suppose. You know, like, all the characters in The Simpsons being in it, practically. Um, minus Dan Castle in it, I suppose. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, the only other thing I can praise is the CGI effects. Like people complain about Godzilla's design, but I would say that the CGI effects in the movie have aged really, really well. Um, it's just like Jurassic Park as well. For some reason, it I suspect um, it's because they used uh, um, soft image, which was a uh, um, it was a bit of 3D software that Autodesk uh, bought, and then they basically got rid of it. You know. Uh, the closest thing to it today, I would say, is uh, is Blender. And, you know, Soft Image did Jurassic Park. It did this um, film. It did Star Wars, the special editions, and probably the prequels as well, but who knows. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would say even to this day, you know, like um, the CGI still looks really good, even if you get, like, a, a more modern release of the, of the film, like a 4K release or, like, a... A Blu-ray or whatever. Um, I've got the snuggles today. Anyway. <laughs> it's a warm day, but I've got a cold. That uh, that makes sense. But um, yeah. Um, but um, there is actually a video of one of the the animators who did. Uh, um, this is me as an animator myself. Um, there's a, a video of one of the animators doing, I think, a TED presentation where they actually show off the original Godzilla rig that they use. So uh, uh, basically, for um, non-animation people a rig is basically like an armature like you know like in stop motion you got an armature um it's basically a skeleton inside like a foam latex model yeah that's basically what it is in 3d animation but it's uh it's essentially yeah something like that yeah you get you get the point you can hear you can probably hear the cat screaming right now but it's fine <laughs> um but yeah um go watch that you know that's um an interesting watch um other than that um I don't have much else to say about Godzilla 98. You know, um, 
other than that, I was too young to watch it, and uh, that I really do like the special effects. I guess that's about it. You know, I find, or it's more like I find the behind the scenes stuff of this film more interesting than the the actual uh, final product. Especially, you know, when you look into the more like the development hell stuff. You know, like uh, that was put through, like you know, like they had drafts in nineteen ninety four. Stan Winston was supposed to do it until eventually got to uh, Roland Emmerich and crew. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, basically that's all I've got to say about Gods in 98. And uh, my uh, recommendations uh, for, if nothing else, uh, if, if you want a, a good transfer, get the 4K copy of Gods in 98. Um, I will just say this, even though like I've, even though I've already said it's a terrible Godzilla film, um, it is a, if you just want just a fun romp, just buy it for just the sake of the monster stuff. Um, but um, this is probably the nicest looking Godzilla film to date on 4K next to uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla, which was a Japanese import. So um, the Monster vs. Films excuse me the Monster vs. Films uh, don't compare but uh, yeah but um, anyways uh, that's my segment and uh, as always, keep it kaiju